worked on the first try again. Uh, now, the only bad part is that uh, the last three times that I've done these where it worked on the first try, it was buggy as hell. It jumped around, skipped, so hopefully I don't get that uh, bugginess. Hopefully my connection does well during this live stream, but it is Friday. Um, I, I <laughs> YouTube is so jacked right now. I have three thumbs up, but one person watching, according to my little ticker there, which is clearly not working. <laughs> uh, four people on, three thumbs up. Who's my first commenter going to be in the chat? It's going to be Darth Primus. What's up, Darth Primus? Um, I have this guy right here. I was uh, thinking about actually not doing a live stream today because I was expecting to get a few things in the mail, uh, some stuff that I bought online, and I did not receive them. Uh, and I have not been to the post office. I know I have stuff waiting for me at the post office, but um, I thought about just holding off until the weekend. But then I started looking at Facebook and I started seeing posts about people that are just legitimately like worried right now and afraid and frightened and whatnot of this situation we're in. So I decided that I was going to do this to get everyone's mind off of current events and focus more so on stuff that makes us happy, or at least stuff that makes me happy. I don't know if R2-D2 makes you happy or if hot toys make you happy, but this is a hot toys R2-D2. I actually picked that one up um, from uh, Dallas Vintage Toys. I did a little trade with them. So I had some trade credit and I picked this one up. Uh, it looks great. So I took it from the shelf right over there. If you could see it was right next to Luke. New Hope Luke, uh, but I took him off the shelf here because I don't think that I have shared this on anything that I've done. So I'm going to show you what this is all about. It's got a little die cast dome head. It's got some light up features, some pretty badass light up features. And then it's also got this little thing, which says Star Wars, but it's also remote control and it activates some sounds. So, well, I already turned on a light by accident. So let me turn that off. Bam. Whoops. Bam. There we go. It is uh, touch sensitive, just like the old Sideshow one, except this one has a die cast dome head. Um, I was really struggling to figure out what I was going to talk about on this. I did get one box in. I got that on the Wednesday uh, live stream. And that box was from Dunko Bookstore. I participated in a uh, live sale. And uh, it's some, uh, some classic stuff. So I'll show you that. It's not too many items. And then um, the other thing is, is I actually made, can you see it? Let's see if I can get out of the freaking way. There it is, right there. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I made a new Detolf shelf and I dedicated it. I put a little riser in, a little acrylic riser. First question people are asking me, where did I get that riser? And that riser I bought from James from the toy department. I actually got that when I was still in Cincinnati. So uh, I don't know if they actually stock those at the toy department, but James is affiliated with a uh, site called Collecting Warehouse. I'm not tied to them or anything. I'm just telling you guys how you can buy it, but they sell these acrylic risers for Detolfs there. So Collecting Warehouse, I think it's just collectingwarehouse.com. I put a link to it on my Facebook post. So uh, check with that Facebook post. But the <laughs> back to my original statement is when I posted a picture of th that shelf, people were like, uh, is Cobra next? When are you going to do Cobra? So what I decided to do was uh, currently all my Cobra three and three quarter inch figures were just in a little plastic tote shelf in bags. So I was just going to go through there and show you some of my favorite Cobra figures. So uh, you already saw some of those. I went through a few of those when I was talking about um, the six-inch figures that I would love for them to do next. I showed you the Bat, Storm Shadow, Zartan, Destro, uh, Cobra Commander, Chrome Dome with the Claw, and then uh, Armored Cobra Commander. But I'm going to show you some more of my 25th, 30th, 50th club exclusive, convention exclusive Cobra figures. That was the other question I got is, what line are those from? So they're all three and three quarter inch figures and they're a combination of 25th GI Joe, uh, which are still pretty affordable. You can still find them for pretty good prices. Club exclusive, 
So they had a GI Joe club. Once the 25th line ended, once the 50th line ended, they had a bunch of additional characters that they were doing and they did those ex exclusively for a club. Um, you kind of had to like subscribe to the club and pay for the figures. Those figures are pretty expensive now, but club exclusive, convention exclusive, like Joe Con exclusive. There's some 30th in there, so there's some 50th in there, but I'm just gonna go through my tote because I got nothing else to show you right now. I'm gonna do the Hot Toys R2, I'm gonna do these comics and then we'll do the tote and then we'll do the chat and that'll probably take up our hour since I've already talked for five and a half minutes. So let's go ahead and see who's here. We got 61 people on. Thank you for joining me. It is Friday. Hopefully you had a decent week. And James is in here. So yeah, I mentioned James. Uh, saw your family reviews. By the way, subscribe to his channel. Uh, I very much appreciate his taste in comic books. I love his uh, weekly polls, which are currently on hold because there's no comic books coming in. But yeah, James is in the chat. So let me go ahead and scroll up, see who else is in here. So Rashad was the second one to uh, to comment in the chat. So Rashad is here. Commando Danny, Lord Luigi, uh, MCT Dog, Darth Primus, Night Walker, Ionicus, Toy Reviews, your friendly neighborhood YouTuber. What's up, Buddy Jones, James Sawyer's in here. Commando Danny, Rob Swolo, Louis Melly, three sixty five Toy Hunter. <clears throat> I think that's I think that's everyone that's commented. Uh, XNDR123, greetings from Peru. How are you doing in Peru? Uh, Count Dadku. I'm going to try and avoid talking about current uh, events and current situations right now and only focus on stuff that can get our mind off of that and uh, and be more uh, geek, geek related, geek culture related. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, I don't know if any of you are interested in this, but literally as I was uh, taking the thumbnail, I had, I had an email pop up. Not affiliated with TF Source. I always got to say that because honestly, if they're watching, I want the affiliation. <laughs> I want them to send me an email say, hey, I want the affiliation. Anyway, uh, I got an email from TF Source saying that the vehicle Voltron is currently 50 bucks off. So if you were thinking about getting vehicle Voltron, the soul of Chagokin, which I moved it. <laughs> it seems like every single live stream I do, stuff is in different places. That's what I do during a quarantine. Uh, when I'm not working, when I'm off and, you know, I'm not having to chauffeur the girls around in their extracurriculars, I'm moving stuff around in my in my detolf. So I'm making G.I. Joe shelves. I'm moving Transformers. I'm putting higher end stuff in this side. But there's the Vehicle Voltron right there. Just an amazing piece if you like Vehicle Voltron, I guess. I wish they would have this deal for Lion Voltron, but TF Source, 50 bucks off. It's 350 bucks. So it is a gigantic chunk of change, obviously, especially right now when we're probably trying to save our pennies a little bit. But uh, it is, for those that were thinking about buying it, uh, it's 350 instead of 400 right now. So there you go. I just wanted to share that because that literally just popped up as I was taking the thumbnail here. I'll delete that and delete that. So what are we going to get started with? Let's get started with this Hot Toys. R2-D2, again, I got this at Dallas Vintage Toys. This is the first version that Hot Toys did. So this is, Sideshow did a version, and the Sideshow version is very, very cool, and it has the little, I, I used to call it Bar 2-D2 because it has the drink rack from Return of the Jedi when he was on the sail barge, and it has like um, a lot of really cool accessories, and it was touch sensitive, where you touched literally this blue part right here, and one light would come on, you touch it again, more lights would come on, and you touch it again, and they all go off did not have any sound functions, and it did not have any die cast. So I, while I do really like that Sideshow version, I like the die cast, the die cast feel more because it feels heavy, feels like an actual like robot, a droid, uh, a rolling trash can like R2-D2 kind of looks like. But uh, this part right here, just the dome part is die cast. The rest of it is plastic. It's very well done plastic. Nice paint, nice detail. Nice uh, sculpting and whatnot. Uh, it's cool because uh, just like the sideshow, this part, this leg right here is spring action. So you can actually hide it in there. And then you can have R2. And these are like ratcheted, if you can hear that. Ratcheted uh, joints. You can have them looking like this, where he's just like that. Or uh, like I just had it, you can put the legs back, pop the spring out. Extend it out and then put the this part right here articulated and then there's little wheels in the bottom there 
But uh, the cool part on this, the reason I like this version, now again, this is the first version of R2-D2. There is one currently available. I believe this one sold out. You might be able to find it on the secondary market. But the current version of R2-D2 is on SideshowToy.com, and it's got a freaking buttload of, like, arms and stuff and accessories. I don't know if it's sound enabled. I, I think it's light up. I think it has the light up features. I don't know if it's die cast. It's like $250. So I would assume it has the die cast head. But this is the first version and I really like this version. So let's go ahead and do this. So hopefully you could see this. Um, I'm gonna touch this part right here and whoa, that is bright. So there's the, there's the first light. There's a light right there. And this light is actually, you can move that around a little bit. Point it up, point it down, whatnot. And then it also turns on the light in the back there and a light right there. So three lights with one touch. You touch it again, and then you got these two lights right here and then this light that flashes red and blue. And then you got these on the back. Let's see if you could see that. I gotta get it at a good angle. So this is flashing green and then orange. Uh, I know it's not showing up, but it's green, orange, green, orange, green, orange. And then it's got this right here. Here, let me try this. Let's see if I can make it easier to see. You can't really see it any better, but you can see there's a, almost like a little Knight Rider light. Wah, 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 wah. Except it's not red like Kit. But uh, there you go. So there's the light up features. I like the light up features, but let's try this out. So I got a little remote. The W is a button. You turn it on and off there. It takes just a battery there. But let's see if I could put it near the mic and you can hear it. Ready? You're gonna work? Does it work with the lights on? No, let's try this. Did I turn it off? Hold on. Failing right now. Frick. <laughs> there we go. I could not get that to work. There we go. I'm pressing the button, by the way, so. I You have to point it at it, though. Hopefully you can hear his little sounds that he's making right now. <laughs> How many different things did he... I like that one the most. He makes a bunch of sounds, so I'm not gonna sit here <laughs> for the whole live stream and do all the sounds, but it's really cool. I think this battery and this remote's dying, that's why it took me so long <laughs> to get it to work. But, yeah, I, I definitely need, I need, I need a new battery in there. But pretty awesome. So there's the Hot Toys R2-D2. This is the first version. Um, I like it. I like the light up features, bam, bam. Boom. I like it a lot. So I would recommend it. Uh, if you have the money to spend on it, definitely need to change the battery out in the remote though. But that's the first thing I was going to show you. Let me take a look at the comments here. Uh, Slapshot Toys. What's up, man? Kyle's here. Uh, damn, that's the one thing that's missing for my Sideshow R2. No sounds. I like the drink cart functionality on the, the Sideshow one though. Uh, Mitchell Dorsky's here. Thank you, Mitchell. Uh, Darth Primus, CN is says uh, funny sounds, Angeliki Sarmpani, very nice. R2 sounds pissed. Uh, yes, I hear the beeps from R2D2. Good, Robert Chattel said. So uh, you were almost at 20,000 subscribers. I know I've been keeping just a side eye on that. Uh, I'm gonna do um, some kind of giveaway. I'll give some stuff away for that. That'll be fun. Anyone enjoying their lunch while watching this? I actually, um, I made some lunch for the girls and I, uh, I made a little bit of extra for me. So uh, they had tater tots, corn dogs, and I had uh, a corn dog and 
five tater tots for lunch right before I went live here. Since you, what's your oldest hot toy and how is it holding up? The one thing that has discouraged me from hot toys is the test of time. Uh, my oldest hot toy is, let's see if I can point to it, that one right there, that Captain America from the first Avengers movie. That is my oldest hot toy. That was my, I think, second or third hot toy that I ever bought. The first one that I bought, I don't have anymore. It was a dark night. Uh, that was the one that I kind of accidentally just fell into uh, because the, the guy that I was working with at the show didn't have any Bowen statues and I had a bunch of trade credits. So I got that uh, Christian Bale, I think it was a DX, I forgot what number it was, but it was a Dark Knight, Christian Bale. And then once I got it open and started looking at it, like this is freaking amazing. So I bought that Captain America. It is still holding up very, very well. I did see that they're actually doing another version of it uh, for Endgame, since he goes back and fights himself. Uh, and obviously that's going to be on a better body, probably more accurate, but this one has sentimental value. So this is one of the ones that I'll always hold on to, uh, Cap from the first Avengers movie. Um, but that's my oldest one right now. Let's see here. How are you doing, Cincy? I'm doing pretty good. I'm hanging in there. I got a my, I work on a project like every week, so I'm doing a work work video that's due today. Um, but I'm doing pretty good. Um, I need to continuously do cardio because I'm eating tater tots and corn dogs for lunch. As opposed to a pre-situation that we're in right now, I'd have like a freaking popcorn cake with peanut butter. But I'm eating a lot of a lot of junk food, so I'm I'm having to do cardio every day and a lot of sit ups and um, core stuff. And I honestly I think that really helps. I think exercise really really helps. Um, there's been times where I just felt down in the dumps, like just like I felt like a giant like slug, um, and I was I wasn't eating very well and uh, I wasn't exercising at all. But when I personally, what works for me is when I exercise, when I do cardio, I do at least two or three miles of cardio every day. And then I do at least 100 to 150 like sit ups and crunches a day. When I don't do that, I just feel like crap. So I think exercise really, really helps me. I've heard from other people it does as well. So I'm not going to give any kind of advice or anything. I'm just telling you what works for me and what helps me feel better about myself and just feel better health wise uh, in general. Uh, let's see here. Do you plan on getting the sideshow mythos Boba Fett Christian Mosqueda uh, asked that? Uh, probably not. I have the hot toys Boba Fett. I have the deluxe version, the one that they did with the, um, the additional helmet with the J guys that uh, Captain Rex had on his helmet. Um, and I'm really happy with that Boba Fett. Um, he is, is he out of frame right now? He is out of frame right now. He's standing right next to Bespin Leia uh, on a, here, I'll just show you. Let's see if you can see it real quick. Right there. Right. Why, why do I have so much difficulty pointing? Right there. <laughs> There's Boba next to uh, Bespin Leia. So I'm pretty happy with that one. So I'm probably not going to get the Mythos one. Uh, Night of Rents is what the frick is up. I got my 3.75 Remnant Stormtrooper today. Such a good figure. I love that figure. I have him right here. As a matter of fact, probably still can't see the details on him, but he's he's like beaten down and uh, he lost his Emperor. He lost his Dark Lord of the Sith, Vader. And he's just working for random dudes that want to buy little force sensitive children. So yeah, he's just he's just uh, hanging in there right now. <laughs> uh, what's your next hot toy? I think, Insane Goon asked that, I think my next one is Qui-Gon. That one got delayed though. I think it got delayed till uh, May or June, but I think that's the next one that I have, uh, that I've paid off. I think I'm still paying that off or I paid it off, but that's the next one. Unless I get something in trade, unless like this thing goes away very fast and I'm able to go to DDT and trade some stuff and get a new one, I think that's the next one. Uh, let's see. Hater Tots from Jane Silent Bob reboot. I still haven't watched that reboot, uh, the, the newest Jane Silent Bob movie. I definitely want to. 
Do you own the Sideshow 3PO? I used to have it, but I sold it. It was very fragile in some parts, so it kind of scared me. Uh, just articulating his arms and the little th very thin pieces of plastic that connected like the, the elbow joint kind of worried me a little bit, but I ended up selling that one. It was a pretty good figure though, from what I can remember. And I think that had the touch sensitive. I think you tapped his head and his eyes turned on as well. Exercise always works, clears the mind, Lord Luigi says. It definitely does for me. I feel so much better at the end of the day when I know that I've done exercise and gotten the blood flowing. Um, Amateur Toy Hunter says, hey, since you just joined in, did you just get the Hot Toys R2-D2 or have you had it for a while? I hear, I hear you on the eating. Uh, that was my first week, but had to make a change. Feel much better. Um, I got this... Uh, a few days before the poop hit the fan with this whole thing that we got going on right now. So I was actually saving that for a haul video that I never ended up doing. So I figured I would just show you on here. So it's a pretty new figure to me. Should the Bengals trade their number one overall pick? No, I think they should hang on to it. Um, and, and, uh, and here's the, our first brain fart of the day. I can't remember the name, <laughs> the damn name <laughs> of the player that we need to get as our quarterback. Joe. <laughs> Someone please drop in the comments. Every live Joe Burrow. Lauren Luigi has literally bailed me out at least on four or five live streams. Joe Burrow, thank you. This is stuff that literally I talk about for days on end. I, I have talked about Joe Burrow for many, many days. And then I someone asked me a question and the the little synapses are not firing in my brain. And I just cannot think of the name. And I just freaking brain fart. I do that so often now. Big uh David Big Dog Ramey says, Are you going to get the new Black Series Best Garmando that is coming out on pre-order soon? Absolutely. Um I actually thought about getting the SH figure arts one as well but apparently it went live this morning and has already sold out. So I'm probably not going to get that one now. I'll probably just stick with the, uh, the black series. And honestly, to me, at least black series has really showed the gap between imports. It used to be like imports up here for Hasbro way down here, but with all the new digi digital face printing technology, they've kind of closed the gap a little. I still think there's a, uh, you know, a lot of difference between import figures like Mayf SHF and what Hasbro has to offer. But honestly, Hasbro is is closing, closing in on them. So I'm sure it's only going to be a matter of time before Hasbro is able to produce something that is just like import level quality, but at 20 bucks or 24 bucks or whatever it comes out to. Did you hear about the Target exclusive Earthrise Seekers 2-pack? No. So that's going to be, since we've already gotten Starscream, which is around here somewhere, that's going to be Thundercracker and Skywarp, hopefully. That's badass. That's freaking awesome. Because I was wondering if they were going to do the other two Seekers. So I have not heard about it, Jim Young. But uh, if that is actually the case, and it is Skywarp and Thundercracker, that makes me very happy that I'll have all three of the Seekers. Since he any love for Heavy Duty on G.I. Joe? Um, did I ever have a Heavy Duty figure? I don't think I ever did in, in the original. Um I had like when you know, Rise of Cobra first came out, wasn't Heavy Duty one of the characters in Rise of Cobra? I know it was Breaker, Duke, Scarlet, Snake Eyes. Wasn't Heavy Duty the other one of the guys? Um, I think I had that figure, but um, I don't think I had the original one. Remnant Stormtroopers easily one of the best looking Stormtroopers ever. Uh, Knight of Ren 789, what up? Ionicus Tour Reviews. Are you going to get Hot Toys, Leia, and Wicket? Yes. Montgomery Designs, I'm very excited about that. I currently have – he's out of frame right now. But I have Luke in his Endor gear chilling out by himself. Um, I've, I've kind of done my shelves by movie. So I have <clears throat> one, two, two uh, shelves for New Hope. I've got Luke and R2, and then I've got Han and Chewie. And then I've got Off Camera, which you can't see right now. My Empire shelf, I have two shelves for Empire, and I have Boba Fett, Bespin Leia, and then I have a Stormtrooper and uh, Vader from Empire. And then my Return of the Jedi, I have two shelves. I have Endor Luke on one shelf, 
and I have the emperor and his throne on a shelf. And then the, I have prequels and stuff too. But yeah, I am definitely going to get that Leia and Wicked. I'm really excited about that. It's pricey. I'm going to have to pay it off. Uh, but he's going. they are going to go on the shelf with Luke from Endor. So 123 people in here, 41 thumbs up. Thank you for the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Are you going to get Hot Toys? Like, Oh, I already I just read that one. Sorry, no spoilers then, my bad, Nightwalker. What did you spoil, Nightwalker? Amateur Toy Hunter. I like the Hot Toys R2, except for the fact that the light sequence is backwards. The hollow projector shouldn't be on all the time. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Tony Marchizio said that. I did not even think about that. That's a good point. Um... Roadblock wasn't around at that time, Nightwalker says. Speaking of Black Series, took a big pass on the carbonized Stormtrooper. Looks like a cheap Phasma. I passed on that one, too. I passed on the carbon. I The carbonized, to me, it just, it's kind of gimmicky, and it just doesn't really fit in with what I have going on display-wise. It looks cool. It's shiny. Uh, I like shiny stuff, but Boba Fett never looked like that. The Stormtrooper never looked like that. I think Mandalorian can kind of pass for being carbonized because um, I guess, I mean, he when he had that armor on, he was just all dingy and battle-worn. When he got the Beskar, then he looked shiny. If they did a Beskar carbonized, then that would be cool, and I'd go for that. But I passed on the, uh, the two most recent ones that just came up for uh, order. Uh, James says, what do you think about the Toys era juggernaut? My 1-6 collection is pretty much just Fox X-Men focused, but I'm not sure I liked his look enough in Deadpool 2 to buy it. Uh, I like it from the neck up. I really like the facial expression in the helmet, but the yellow suit just throws me off. Uh, I know that's how he looked in the movie. He wore that yellow kind of prison jumpsuit, but, um... I mean, if you're going for movie accuracy, I think it looks great. I love the size of it. It looks freaking huge. But at the same time, I just it doesn't it doesn't remind me enough of Juggernaut. Um, I just I I can't imagine Juggernaut Juggernaut without like the maroon kind of reddish uh, brownish armor. <clears throat> so hopefully that answers your question, James. I I think it looks good. If you're going for like movie a movie accurate shelf display i think it would look fantastic as a texas guy our weather is really crazy here lately yes mct dog it is freaking crazy right now uh thunderstorms right now i i actually like the fact that it's thunderstorming because it's going to keep people inside in their homes and keep people off keep people away from other people so hopefully it thunderstorms even more um Let's see. I had to get the the carbonized Boba Fett because I can't get a normal Boba Fett at retail. Got my Jedi Revens in the mail yesterday. They are fantastic and look somewhat carbonized. I still need that Jedi Revan. Uh, I saw it at GameStop. I just need to pick it up. I haven't bought it yet. I just I'm waiting for the opportunity to buy it. The select Juggernaut is still the best. Tom Bowling says that is definitely one of, if not the best Juggernauts available. The comic Marvel Select Juggernaut. Um, I personally like the Juggernaut that came with the two-pack with Colossus. I really dig that one. That's the one that's currently in my collection. Um, but yeah, the select one is excellent. Do you have a favorite Superpower Secret Wars figure? I love the Shazam, Falcon, respectively. Um, my favorite Secret Wars figure is Doctor Doom, which I actually still have in, on card in my closet here. I need to find a plastic case for it so that I can display it. Hopefully, pre preferably one that has a flat bottom that I could just kind of stand there and the Doctor Doom sits snugly in there and I can display it. But Doctor Doom is by far my favorite Secret Wars figure because that was the first Secret Wars figure I ever had as a kid. Um, so I'm very happy that I was able to find one on card. Superpowers figure, probably uh, Superman or Batman. Those are my favorite ones as a kid. Nark is here, what's up Nark? Congrats on 10K. Hopefully you watch Narc's uh, 10K video that he did. I had a, a short clip in that. Um, and check it out. It was it was fun to film. But uh, what's going on, Narc? Good to see you on here. Uh, Lord Luigi says, do you hear the rumor of a live action X-Men show coming to Disney Plus? As long as it's done well. 
as long as they put some money into it and do it well and they don't uh and, and I want to see like a comic accurate as, as close to comic accurate costumes as they can get. Obviously with like if you look at like the Avengers movie, they couldn't do exact comic accuracy with the looks of those characters. Ca Captain America looks good. It still looks functional, but it looks like Captain America. Hawkeye kind of gets away from his look. He didn't have like the big pointy freaking face mask thing going on. Uh, but he still looked decent. He had, you know, hints of purple. I think the key is if they if they start to get further away from the way it looked in the comic, at least use the colors. Use the, If Magneto doesn't, you know, look like he does in the comic book, use the red on him. Uh, I think that really helps people identify the character they see on screen with the character that they read in comic books or saw in cartoons. All right, so let me uh, do this. I'm going to show you before I get too caught up in these. Aaron McLeod says, hey, what's up? I'm just looking at the comments here. Too much to drink that night, <laughs> Narg said. Uh, I'm going to show you some stuff that I picked up in an online sale from a local comic book shop. So nothing too big here. This stuff is basically stuff that, uh, A, was very nostalgic for me. Um and then B, something that I just thought was thought was freaking awesome and cool. I'm going to start with that thing first. So this right here, you might be wondering, what the frick is that? This is the superhero catalog of games, books, toys, and puzzles. Before the internet, before you could go on to a previews magazine, before you could go online and see what was coming out, they published these things. This is basically a comic book. But instead of an actual story inside, it is advertisements for things that you could buy that were geek related. And this came out, this was published a year after I was born. So this little catalog right here is 44 years old, uh, which is amazing to me. And this is how you bought stuff. If you wanted like geek stuff, like t-shirts, toys, games, puzzles, stuff like that, you would buy one of these and you would, this is a freaking catalog. So I just thought that this was so cool. Um, I saw it here, like the action figures. There's some Mego action figures. I have to be kind of careful with this because this is literally so old. This is, this is approaching half a century old. So I have to be careful with this. But um, the best thing about this, besides the cool pictures and, the fact that this is a catalog advertising toys from the mid seventies is as soon as I took it out of the poly bag and I opened it up, the smell of the paper, the smell of old comic books. For those of you that are old enough to know, that is a very, very, very distinct smell. Um, and this smell, it literally just is like a freaking time warp. It's like I found like a, a wormhole to the past. I just smell that and my senses just start firing off and I'm literally like in the 70s and 80s again in a comic book shop because this smell, if you ever walked into a comic book shop in, the, in like the 70s or 80s, the whole shop would smell like that, would smell like that paper. And it was such a comforting smell to me because obviously as a kid, as like a 12, 13, 14 year old, when I was really getting into comic books, I didn't have a car, so my mom would drive me to local comic book shops on the weekend. I'd beg her, I'd do chores, she'd drive me to the comic book shop, she'd drop me off there, which was okay at the time, I was like 13 years old, she'd drop me off there for like two hours and go and like get her hair done and then pick me up. But uh, I would hang out in the comic book shop and uh, buy stuff and it was, it was so amazing to me. I'd walk out of the shop with a stack of comic books to read and maybe a, a toy or two, but this smell literally brings me back. I'm not gonna go on anymore about the damn smell of this thing, but what I recommend is that be be careful with lead poisoning, Austin Collins says. Um, oh, it's, it's such a nostalgic smell. If, if you ever just wanna be transported to the past, first of all, if you were alive back then, if you're around my age group, like late 30s in, in your 40s or even older, buy an old comic book, buy one of these. I got this for like, what was this, like $5? It was marked 15, but they're having, they had a sale. So I, I bought this for $5. 
Um, well worth it. So very, very cool there. I got that. More stuff from my past. This, from what I can remember, came out in 1988. And this is a first printing of all four of these books. And I think, I'm pretty sure, again, I'm getting up there in age, so I'm starting to forget things. But I think this was my first ever Batman story I ever read. Let me get, let me go back because I read other Batman stories. This was the first Batman comic book I ever bought for myself that I read. Um, this is Batman the Cult. Um, and it's, it's uh, illustrated by Bernie Wrightson, who was a freaking awesome, awesome comic book artist. But uh, a very, very distinct style to Bernie Wrightson there. <clears throat> and uh, this one... I remember it being very kind of like adult oriented. So I would watch the 66 Adam West Batman TV show uh, on TV. And then I was like, oh, I want to I want to read more about Batman. And I got this book. I'm like, holy crap, this is a lot different from Adam West Batman, the pow, bang, uh, you know, the campiness of the 66 Batman show. Very adult oriented. So it was kind of a, a discovery for me as a 13-year-old when this came out in 1988. So I got Batman the Cult book one. These are all like pristine mint copies. Uh, book two. Book three, I distinctly remember this cover. I remember seeing this cover. I'm like, oh, God, that guy's going to get his ass beat by Batman. That's book three. And then this one right here, this one, I think I had this on display in my room just because I really liked that image on the cover. I thought that was so cool. So Batman, the cult, I believe this has maybe been done in trade. Oh, I remember this. I remember that, reading that and seeing that that was a Batmobile at the time. And that that was what really kind of like, I was like, what is going on here? This is like a whole new world for Batman. Um, because I was used to the Batmobile from the 66 Batman show and He's driving around that thing. It's a freaking monster truck, like fully armored. I was like, man, Batman is very different. So this really, again, nostalgic purchase for me. Uh, I think I got this for 25 for all four books. So a pretty good deal. Uh, what's that come out to? 12.50, so six and a quarter, six and a quarter per book. Uh, which is a damn good price considering how much was this originally? This was originally, I bought it for $3.50 in 1988 at Variety Records. Was that the name of the record store? At a record store in, uh, I grew up in McLean, Virginia, for those that are familiar with the Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area. I grew up in McLean, Virginia. It's, I think it's Variety Records and then changed to Wii 3 Records, but it was a record store and people would go in there and like get guitar lessons and stuff, but they had two or three spinner racks of comic books and and it was in the CD section. So I'd walk in like, I'd be like this kid walking through to get comic books and there's all these like older teenagers and stuff going through the tapes, the cassette tapes and the, the records and the CDs and stuff. And I, I, felt, I felt so, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice here. I felt so cool going into that record store, buying comic books. Anyway, a little, little uh, nostalgia for you there. This one right here, I picked up this trade. Again, this is like a brand new trade. And I got this for $10 or $12. It was a pretty good deal. Uh, the cover price is 25 bucks, but Todd McFarlane Spider-Man. Tom McFarlane, Spider-Man, changed changed my life, uh, changed uh, what I collected. Uh, as soon as Tom McFarlane rolled around, I just started looking at the artwork in this thing. I mean, this was groundbreaking, groundbreaking for the time, for artwork and comic books at the time. Uh, this one reprints... Spidey 315 to 323, and then 325 and 328. McFarlane took a break with issue 324. Was that a Graviton issue or something? Acts of Vengeance issue, something like that. And then 326 and 327. Was that Eric Larson that did that? I don't remember, but um, he didn't do those 
issues. So this is basically the second half of Todd McFarlane's run on Amazing Spider-Man because he started with issue 298. Um, issue 300 was big because that was the first appearance of Venom. And then Venom came back in issue 316 and 317. Uh, but this is basically the second half of the McFarlane run. So uh, Hulk has an appearance in here. If you, if you never read this run, here, I'll just show you. It's cool because McFarlane actually did several issues of The Incredible Hulk as well. So it was very cool to see Gray Hulk in this comic book here. Um, but one of the things that I absolutely... Now, mind you, I was, what, 13 or 14 when this came out? I'll show you one of the things that, first of all, he draws an awesome Captain America. Todd McFarlane. He makes good toys now, but man, he is uh, always going to be an artist to me. Here's uh, the cover of that one, Sabretooth. Just the detail that McFarlane used when... Um, it, it, it was just completely different than anything that you, we had seen up to that point. Uh, what, am, what am I looking for here? I'm just going to show you cool pictures in here uh, before I get to the Joes. We're at 41 minutes already. Holy crap. I was looking for some pictures of Mary Jane. Okay, so again, I'm 13 or 14. McFarlane. All right, so G.I. Joes. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the, the chat here. Ben Jan is here. He's late. It's okay. Uh, thanks for joining. Robert Chattel, peeking at Playboys, LOL. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I remember when 7-Eleven sold comics. That was another place I used to go to. 7-Eleven I would go to for cards because I would buy um, – which cards would I buy there? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie cards. I would buy there the uh, Batman, 89 Batman movie cards. I'd buy packs of those there. We play video games. We bring a bunch of quarters. Play the Ninja Turtles video game. Play Gauntlet Two. Get like a Slurpee, a slice of pizza. Seven Eleven was amazing as a kid. Honestly, Seven Eleven was like just the coolest hangout ever. Is it? Is a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old? Uh, you would go there with some money in your pocket. You'd play video games. You'd get a Slurpee. You'd get pizza or a hot dog, uh, buy cards, buy comic books. I mean, it was the best. Um, all right, so some of you that saw my picture that I did with my Detolf shelf with G.I. Joe have asked about Cobra figures. So I'm just going to start pulling out some Cobra figures. This is, this is how I currently have my 25th, 30th, 50th club convention Cobra figures in little bags. If anyone's ever wondering how I kind of like store my stuff, I have all the accessories. Here's Zarana. This is kind of a pricey figure right here. Was she a club? She's either a club or convention. Zarana right there, badass. Uh, but I have the stand, all of the accessories in a Ziploc bag so I don't lose anything and I know which accessories go to which characters. Um, here's another one of my favorites as a kid, Scrap Iron. This is a 25th scrap iron, by the way. I don't have the vintage scrap iron. Uh, there's SDCC Zorana. Thank you, Imperial Holocron. 7-Eleven <clears throat> was legit back in the day, Chris Mendiola says. Um, yes, uh, big dog David Ramey. 7-Eleven uh, used to sell comic books, cards. 7-Eleven was freaking awesome uh, back in the 80s. Video games there. Uh, Crimson Guard, 25th. I'm just pulling out some of my favorites. I remember seeing this one on the bus uh, as a kid in elementary school. Someone brought, not this specific figure, but uh, what's his name? Buzzsaw? Buzzer. Freaking brain fart. Buzzer, the dreadnought. Brought it on the bus. Brought that and Flint on the bus. Blew my mind. Because I was... I knew all of the Joes that were out at that time. And I think that was right when that wave just first started hitting. And I didn't know anything about new Joes coming out. And he brought that on the bus. I'm like, what is this craziness going on? There's there's more Joes? There's more bad guys? Blew my mind. Uh, Xandar, this was part of 
what set was this? The Dreadnought set? Was it uh, Entertainment Earth? I think did a Dreadnought set. But there's Xandar. I really want a Thunder Machine, the Dreadnought's car. Um, when I started thinking about, and here's the driver right there. When I started thinking about vehicles that I want, classic Joe vehicles, Thunder Machine was one that I really, really want. There's Major Blood. They've done a few versions of Major Blood. I, I like this version because it was kind of cartoon accurate with the uh, brown outfit, silver armor. This is, uh, I think this was the best Baroness that we had. This was 50th, I think. I think that was 50th uh, Baroness that we got there. Cobra Eel, always one of my favorites as a kid. Good army builder there as well. Dr. Mindbender, always liked him. Very, very cool. In my fifth grade class, used to hang the hit and run figure from his desk using the awesome repelling duffel bag. I remember wanting it so bad. Gary Pruitt was turd. <laughs> oh, Gary Pruitt in my fifth grade class used to hang it. Um, Steve DeFilippis was the one <laughs> that had the flint and the buzzer on the bus. And he, uh, he had family in Pennsylvania. And uh, he would go up to Pennsylvania and come back with all these Joes that we had not seen before. It was like, it was like I wanted to go so bad to Pennsylvania because he would just come back. And I would be like, where is he getting all these, these crazy new G.I. Joe figures? And that was where. I grew up in Washington, D.C., by the way. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I was. Uh, that was my hunting grounds. Uh, here's Monkey Wrench. Which one was this? This was from one of the movie lines because you could tell by the base. It's got that weird looking base. I think this was Rise of Cobra, maybe. Uh, a couple more Dreadnoughts there. Torch and Ripper. Am I right? Ripper and Torch, yeah. It's hard to remember stuff when you get old. Then, of course, you got Tomax and Zamot. I do have the uh, vintage Tomax and Zamot. Down on a ferret down there, but here's the 25th versions. Rise of Cobra Monkey Ranch. Thank you for, uh, for that, Christopher Kelly. Uh, the G.I. Joe movies franchise needs to get rebooted. I think that's what they're kind of going for with the Snake Eyes movie. And then from what I hear, a Chuckles movie, which if it's anything like the, I think it was IDW did a Chuckles limited comic series. That could be very, very good uh, because that was a really good series. Firefly. Is this the 50th Firefly? This is the best Firefly, in my personal opinion, of the modern. But uh, I really, really like that Firefly. Which Storm Shadow do you have, Cincy? I've got the... Uh, I'll show you. I've got this version right here. I prefer Storm Shadow sleeveless for some reason. I just think that that looks cool. They did a, uh, was it an Ultimate Storm Shadow? I don't remember which one this was in, honestly. Uh, they did an Ultimate. Is this from Renegades? Someone let me know. I know there's someone in the chat right now that knows these Joes much better than me. What series is that from? This is my favorite Storm Shadow. Um, was it, I think Renegades had long sleeves, and I didn't. I didn't really care for it, but uh, I really like that version. So there you go, guys. Uh, the rest is going to be some some chat, some chatting on. Uh, so let me just check that. I have eleven minutes to just to hang out here with you guys. Retaliation Storm Shadow. Retaliation Storm Shadow. That's that one. I think you're right. Christopher Kelly said. Okay, yeah, it looks like James confirming that's retaliation. I think you guys are right. Uh, let's see. I love 3.75 figures for, for Joes or Star Wars. Either way, it's awesome, Knight of Ren says. Sidney Crosby or Alex Ovechkin? Uh, Ovi, definitely. Um, I'm a huge Ovi fan. I'm a, I'm a big Caps fan. I grew up, I grew up a Caps fan um, since I started following them in 80. I, I discovered 
hockey and comic books around the same time, like late 80s, 88, 87-ish. Uh, this right here, by the way, if anyone's wondering, is a Nashville Predators jersey. Who is no PK Subban, who is no longer with the Preds, but got a Preds hat too. I'm matching today. I'm still looking for that Fortnite Havoc, aka Firefly, Annika says. That's either Renegades or the Ultimate Storm Shadow. T Man says, I had no idea this was live. I was watching Hodge Twins, and next thing I know, since he is talking about comic books. <laughs> yeah, I go live uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, T Man. Subscribe to T Man978, by the way. He's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Transformers reviewer, uh, but uh, also founding father of the, the syndicate. No way Crosby. Crosby grew up a Habs fan and should have asked for a trade to Montreal 10 years ago. I, I like Crosby. Uh, I can't stand it when the Caps play him because um, he's so good, but it's kind of like the Tom Brady. You know, you, you don't like the Patriots, but you just have to respect Tom Brady. He's, he's the best. Um, the cap says, yeah, Mark Tenorti was my favorite player as a kid. I met Mark Tenorti. Actually, one of the years, I think it was 96, I went on the ice after a game, and I, I got autographs from all of the Caps players. Um, I, remember, I remember shaking hands with Craig Berube, who's now a coach, St. Louis Blues. Mark Tenorti was awesome. I liked most of the, the dudes that fought. Kevin Kaminsky. Big fan of his. Havoc is cheap on Amazon, T-Man says. Uh, Show GC says, I love T-Man's toy hunts. I do too. T-Man is the man, AM Graphics Studio says. A lot of love for T-Man right now. I'll watch T-Man review a ham sandwich, <laughs> MC T-Dog says. T-Man, you're getting a lot of love in here. Uh, let's see here. Anne-Marie says, wow, nice. You sent me your Marvel Legends Deadpool three years ago. Do you remember that, Montgomery Designs? I think so, yeah. Uh, was that when I was just like, I wanted to just start giving stuff to people, and I asked some figures that people were looking for, and people just started like responding. I'm looking for this. I can't find this. I need this. And I just started sending stuff to people for free. That was kind of fun. I might do that again sometime. The hockey player Jim Carrey. I met Jim Carrey as well. He's around the same age as me. I think he's a year older than me. He was the goalie. Uh, won the Vezina. I believe Secret Figure... Number two is Snake Eyes regular release. I think you're right, James. I think that's the next uh, that that'll complete that wave. Destro and Snake Eyes. <clears throat> what modern Joes are you looking to pick up? Still a lot of club exclusives. I need a lot of club. I need a lot of Tiger Force figures. I need some Slaughter's Marauders. Uh, mostly club. Some convention stuff too. I'm pretty good on 50th, 30th, and 25th. I still remember playing Brett Hall hockey on Super Nintendo. Nintendo. I do too. That was a good, I remember playing NHL uh, early days of like NHL 93. I still remember. Oh, I, I just read that. I like your hunt since you, thank you, CN. I appreciate it. I haven't done a hunt video in a while. Probably going to be a little while before I do another one, but uh, I enjoy doing those too. The Lego razor crest from the Mandalorian, the box art has been solicited. So awesome. I saw that uh, it's 120 bucks, right? Something like that. I showed uh, Tay Tay that, and she got really excited because it has, a, I think, a little, uh, the child little mini figure. So she got really excited for that. I might end up getting that. Show GC says that's the Retaliation Storm Shadow. I have both a loose Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow from that wave, and both in packages as well. Snake Eyes regular release is what I'm waiting for. I want Timber with him and want the mask painted black as it should be. I like the Snake Eyes figure a lot. It's still one of my favorite figures of the year, but I think it would be cool if they did just like a, a straight up six inch version of um, Ninja Snake Eyes with, uh, you know, the, the bl all black, basically. He's got kind of grayish, brownish pants uh, on the the new figure that came out. And I just want like, just simple, it, simplify it. Cause like, if you look at the, the original Ninja Snake Eyes, just black shirt, no wrinkles, no like detail, black shirt. He's got the bandolier, black pants. He's got the little kind of holster things around his ankles. Simplify it. And I think uh, that would be a pretty damn cool figure. I hear Timber is coming, T says. 
anyone know when the new NECA cartoon TMNT figures are coming out? Probably delayed right now. I think a lot of stuff that was supposed to be shipping right around now is probably delayed for a few months. Uh, I resisted this one because of the work pants. I want Ninja Snake Eyes version 2. Um, <laughs> work pants. <laughs> What's a good modern 3.75 inch Snake Eyes? Cincy Nerd. The one that's in my display, I think it's... Is it from the six pack? I'm going to have to look it up. I don't know what freaking set it's from, but it's a specific set. I think it's from, they did a multi-pack and I think it might be from that or it's from 50th or Retaliation. They've done so many damn series. I can't keep track of which figure was from which series, uh, but I'll try and find out. I like G.I. Joe Retaliation Snake Eyes. I also have the... I got five minutes left. I also have the 25th anniversary Joe and Cobra box sets. Do you remember those? I do. Didn't they come with uh, a DVD? Was Tiger Force six inch Duke in April Fool's joke? Yeah, it was a custom. Uh, did you see the hot toys? Or it might have been like a Photoshop job. I, but but yeah, it, it's not a real figure. It would be cool if it was though, and I would definitely get it. Did you see the hot toys Arkham Knight Harley Quinn? Yes, and it looks phenomenal. But I, I'm not doing any uh, video game figures. Uh, so I'm going to probably pass on that. I might get one of the Harleys from Birds of Prey because I honestly, I really like that movie. So I might get I might get uh, one of those Harley Quinns from Hot Toys from that movie. Mr. Imagination says, hey, T-Man, enjoy your videos. Plan on true building modern Joes? Probably not just because of real estate and display space. You could see my uh, shelves, my detail shelves are pretty well packed. Um, so I, I just don't have a ton of room to, to army build. Do you still have your BVS Batman hot toy? No, that was one of the ones I had to let go. I actually, before I moved to Texas, I let go of a ton of hot toys just to lighten the load so that um, I wasn't bringing. Because honestly, if I had brought everything, that stuff would just be sitting in the closet. I mean, you could see how packed my office is now. And this is my main display area. I do have stuff out in the loft, but this is my main display area. So I, I really had to kind of like take my big collection and just kind of like have it more manageable. Your top figs of all time. That's a tough question. I'll have to think about that one. Uh, did you get the SHF Best Garmando? It sold out in 10 minutes on all the import sites, but I got mine. Good job, uh, Show GC. Congrats on scoring that. I did not. I found out about it midday today, and then I went to check, and they're all sold out, so I'm probably just going to stick with the Hasbro. Are you still collecting Storm Collectibles? Uh, yeah, I got the uh, Jushin Thunder Liger Storm Collectibles. Anytime, if they do more like Japanese or uh, Lucha uh, figures, um, wrestling figures, I'll buy those. I want the Mike Tyson. I want the Hulk Hogan. So yeah, I do buy some Storm, um, but I've just kind of limited what I'm buying. Speaking of wrestling, WrestleMania this weekend. So two-day show. I'll probably do, if you're watching right now, 132 people on 70 thumbs up. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for watching. But I will probably do a live kind of, not chat, but a live post on Facebook both nights while I'm watching WrestleMania. So I'll be commenting and stuff and so if you want to hang out, if you're watching WrestleMania, Facebook, I'll be uh, doing something on there. But it's just going to be a post. It's not going to be like a, a chat or a live stream or anything. You still have your lightning connect collection on display. Yeah, right down there. My Power Rangers are right there. Damn, uh, Blue Ranger and the Yellow Ranger. Yellow Ranger, holy cow. That thing sold out everywhere. Hopefully they make more. I, I never got my hands on a Yellow Ranger. I didn't pre-order it. I didn't think I would need to pre-order it because literally all the stores before this crap went down, all the stores would always have the figures I was looking for for Lightning Collection. But Yellow Ranger, freaking gone. Uh, so hopefully I am able to find her at some point as well as the blue. Do you have SHF, Triple H, or Rock or those ones? Just ordered them yesterday from Ringside. They were super cheap. Weren't they like $6 or something at one point on ringside? Also ordered the Wolfpack Sting and Undertaker as Kane. Um, no, I don't have those, by the way. Um, so when are you going live again? Probably Monday. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is what I'm going to probably stick with. 
I think I'm going to hunt down some food from DQ. I think we're getting Whataburger carryout uh, tonight. Again, got to do my cardio because <laughs> we're eating. <laughs> the girls, they only like like total crap, like junk food. So uh, I had a corn dog and tater tots for lunch. I'm probably going to have Whataburger for dinner. We're probably going to get Marco's pizza tomorrow night. <laughs> so, yeah, I, gotta, I definitely got to do my cardio every night. Same here. Have yet to get that Yellow Ranger. Best ketchup, the cap says. Best ketchup at Whataburger. Their spicy ketchup is phenomenal. Have you watched Swamp Thing on DC Universe? Not yet. I have not. I did subscribe to DC Universe, though. So I am a subscriber now. I'm, I'm uh, making my way through the Harley Quinn animated show. Uh, since he D Amazing had a Storm Collectibles Lobo, it's awesome. He's going to do a review. Very cool. I'll watch that. I like D Amazing. He does very good reviews. Uh, Jay Hernandez, excellent reviewer. Um, Unparalleled Universe, excellent reviewer. T-Man, excellent reviewer. There's a ton of excellent reviewers out there on YouTube. Uh, and they all bring their own like individual original thing to their reviews, which is very cool. Tom Bowling's getting Pizza Hut. That's our normal. We usually get pizza. I'm just talking about food now. We usually get Pizza Hut on Saturday nights. Uh, but we're going to try this one called Marco's, uh, which everyone is raving about. My like my whole neighborhood's raving about Marco's. <laughs> so we're going to try that. Pixel Dan, absolutely. Pixel Dan's awesome. Um, let's see. Ionica says my reviews suck. They don't suck. Uh, if you take the time to film a review, I will watch it. Thank you, by the way, Cincy. Absolutely, T-Man. Uh, stay safe, Cincy. I'm out. See ya, John. Thanks for joining. Stargirl looks sick. I'm past an hour. I think I covered everything that I was going to cover. Um, buy old comics if you want to uh, have that nostalgic feeling of walking into an old comic book store. Um, this is a pretty badass hot toy figure right here. Lights up, makes sounds when the battery's working. Mod Pizza is awesome. Yeah, we did Mod Pizza for uh, for a while. I like their pizza. It's pretty good. How much is original issues of Spider-Man worth, you think, from the beginning of it all? Like original McFarlane issues? Because issue 300 is like 300 bucks. It's it's pretty expensive. Uh, or, like if you go like issue one of Amazing Spider- or of Spider-Man, that's several thousand dollars. I'd go trades uh, if you want to catch up on the storyline. But the McFarlane run, issue 298 through 328, just an amazing, amazing run. Microwave pizza to be safe nowadays. Last thing I'm going to say about food is uh, I've been getting these Totino's pizzas for the girls for them to eat. And I heard someone say that the best frozen pizza, the best, because a lot of people are buying frozen foods right now, is Tony's pizza. I have not tried it. We got one in the freezer. I'll probably make it this weekend, and I'll let you know. Check that out. I got to go, guys. I got to get back to work. Thanks for joining. You guys are awesome. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for just, like, being here. Have a great weekend inside. Buy stuff online if you if you got the itch. Support your local comic shops that are doing online sales. Peace to you, Montgomery Designs. You guys are the best, but adios for now. See you on Facebook for WrestleMania weekend. And I'll see you on Monday for another live stream. See you guys later. Adios.